<clears throat> hey Kirby, just wanted to, uh, the scrimmage as a whole today. Uh, how uh, how did it go? Uh, how did things go on the injury front? And is the defense maybe kind of closing the gap a little bit there with the offense in terms of where they're at? I was uh, pleased with the effort and um, enthusiasm at the scrimmage. Uh, it probably wasn't uh, the best execution we've had from an execution standpoint, uh, offensively and defensively, but I thought the effort and enthusiasm was good. We did have some some rain and some wet ball, and it was really good to get to practice in that. I thought, you know, we, we, we every year we end up with probably one or two games with a threat of that or a little bit of rain. I thought the players handled that well. Um, got a good, good number of snaps. Uh, we weren't able to finish in the stadium, but we did uh, get to finish back in the indoor. Um, but the kids – Played hard. You know, I don't think we tackle well enough defensively right now. Uh, and it's just one of those things in this sport that you need to tackle every day to be good at tackling. You can't tackle every day to be safe. And uh, it's a fine line of um, trying to create good tacklers, but stay safe. And that's something we are very cognizant of and try to handle. Um, but I thought the players played really hard and uh, executed well. Dean. All right, let's go to Anthony Dasher. And Kirby, then Kirby, I want to. Can you hear me? Yeah, Dean, go ahead. Go ahead, Dean. Sorry about, sorry about that. Um, I wanted to ask about the running backs. There's not been a lot. We've not talked about them a lot in the spring so far. How have they looked, and, and what are you expecting from them Saturday? Uh, you know, we've been a little dinged up there. You know, with Kenny out, and um, you know, we've had other guys out, and. We're trying to get all those guys back healthy, so it's been uh, it's been tough. You know, uh, young man has come in nicely. He's done a great job. Anthony Summy's done a great job. Uh, a couple of those guys have done a really good job of filling in um, with Kenny out, and uh, you know, James and Samir have been very steady, uh, hard workers. I thought Kendall did a really nice job today uh, with some physical runs. You know who he who he is. I mean, we had a couple. Third and shorts, fourth and shorts that uh, he was able to convert as a, as a big back and do some good things. They're all working really hard on their protection. That's one of the areas that we've really targeted this spring in terms of pass protection and pickups. Um, you know, a lot of people want to come after JT and uh, be aggressive and, and blitz and do things. They're going to be asked to, to really make people pay for that. And the way to make people pay is to be able to block it and pick it up. But I'm pleased with what those guys have done. Okay, let's go now to Anthony Dasher and then uh... – uh, Mike Griffith. Hey, Kirby. How is uh, Jordan Davis establishing himself so far this spring? Uh, you know, Jordan's done a good job. Jordan's biggest issue is conditioning and, and weight control. He knows that. He's worked really hard on that. We've got to get him to cut some more um, for him to be elite. You know, the game of football is played so differently now, and uh, there's certain games he's a much larger factor in. And some teams can try to make him a no factor when they're spraying the ball out, throwing the ball a lot, playing loose plays. Uh, it's harder for him to uh, contrib be a contributor uh, when the ball the ball game speeds up. So it's critical that he get in the best shape of his life. Um, part of the reason he decided to come back, you know, was to be in great shape so he could create some more value, and that's that's one of the big things that he's working on. Kirby, I know you guys work on a, a ton of things in these scrimmages. What were some of the priorities that you wanted to get out of today? In addition, to, I guess the wet ball work you mentioned. Uh, second, 10, third down, um, end of game scenarios, uh, about three or four different clock management situations. Uh, minute 50, no timeouts, uh, got to score. Uh, minute 53 timeouts, uh, got to get a first down to win the game, which happens in our conference a lot. Um, so we did uh, a lot of game simulation, end of game scenarios besides just our typical uh, scrimmage move the field. All right, let's go Chip Towers and then uh, Mark Weiser. Kirby, I, I apologize if you can't uh, comment on this. I was just wondering if you could comment on the uh, the DB transfer, Tyke Smith, and if if you can't in any way, if you if you wouldn't mind sort of assessing how that secondary's been coming together. I know that was a big priority for you guys this spring. Yeah, I'm not. Uh, I'm not even sure if I'm allowed to comment or not. I think I may be able to, but rather, <laughs> I would. Yeah. Have not, so I'll just use that as my my reason for not answering it. But the DBs are. Um, coming along and um we got we got a long way to go but we're getting there you know it's, i haven't seen any regress that's the good thing but if we're on a one mile journey you know we're, we, we we just hit the first quarter 
And uh, we, we've got, you know, a ways to go. We've got to figure out who it is. We've had guys at that position deemed up who haven't been able to practice. And we're already thin and we're already young. And when you miss practice time, that's hard. And uh, we're trying to grow those guys up. Um, we're in constant search of our best uh, lineup. I will say this. Every one of them wants to get better, and every one of them is trying to get better. And we've had flashes of some good plays. Um, but consistently, we have to improve. We have to improve with consistency in the secondary. That starts with tackling. starts with eye control. It's not just the corners. Um, it's the safeties as well and, and communication. So all those things are critical, and you know, we're not where we need to be. But I didn't expect it to be right now. I mean, we've we, we got a ways to go. Trevor, I had a two-part question for you since it's a uh, Master Saturday and you put out that video the other day. Your experience playing uh, Augusta National in the past and uh, as far as football, uh, left tackle, what's it look like there with, with Truss and, and Broderick Jones competing? Well, on the Masters front, I just would say blessed because just an opportunity to have ever played there is once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. You know, one of the probably the happiest days I've had in terms of uh, being able to experience it with my father and go there and play and uh, one round, that was really incredible. That's probably one of the, the highlights of he and I being able to play golf together once there. Um, and then left tackle is, you know, Truss has played there the most and has worked there the most. Um, he's continuing to work. He's gotten better. You know, it's with him, so much of it is communication, demeanor, body language, uh, fight, and, and he's, he's improved in all those areas. I'm very pleased with where he's headed and what he's doing. Um, the competition is there. You know, we've got guys competing. Jamari's taking reps there. Um, and so have uh, uh, Broderick and Mims. So, again, those guys will battle. Broderick and Mims are, are both, you know, working right and left. Um, but that, that's a spot that, again, it's always going to be open. Trust is getting most of the reps there until we figure out who the best five are. Thanks. Hey, let's go with Brandon Sudge, and then we'll go to Vance Levy. Hey, uh, Kirby, I want to ask about the wide receivers because last week you said, yeah, I mean, you know, everything is fine after those couple of injury spells that y'all had. Is there anybody who you've seen kind of step up who maybe we haven't seen too much of? And um, can you just give an overall assessment of what you've seen from the depth and the talent that you have at uh, right out? Yeah, the depth has taken a hit, obviously, with uh, with George. Um, and, uh, you know, Jermaine's been – he got to do Indy today. He's back running around doing some things. He didn't scrimmage, but he was able to do a lot more, and he's getting a lot more flexibility. You know, Marcus Rosen is really close. Uh, he's out there running around doing walkthroughs, doing doing conditioning. You see him on the side getting to run, and you know that he's close to being healthy. Dom's on the side running. So, you know you have – guys there that have experience and uh, and have done a good job and it's really a valuable time for the uh, the younger guys the other guys getting an opportunity Kiaris has been very consistent um, uh, J Rob's made some plays and continues to grow and get better AD Mitchell has made some plays Jalen Johnson's made some plays Lab McConkey made some plays today those guys continue to grow get better and compete D Rob had some so I, I'm, I'm you know I'm, I'm fired up I wish I had all of them, because I think that competition would be you know, really good to see who the, the top guys and the starters are. But a lot of the young guys are catching up the old guys really fast uh, with the work they've been able to get. Curry, JT seemed to really embrace being a leader, even saying he's more vocal than he's ever been. Did, did you know he had that in him? Yeah, we certainly felt that way. I mean, to play at the high school program he played at, to go to USC and start as a – he really started as a high school senior. Um, so you can't not be a leader and do that. And um, he's taking more of a vocal role, you know, even with our team and um, commands the offense, understands the offense, and uh, does a good job uh, leading that unit. I think anybody at the quarterback position is capable of it. It's just, you know, what are the limits and what are the ceilings? How did he do it today? I did a good job. I don't. I don't. I, mean, I don't have the stats. I don't know exactly where he was in terms of uh, total numbers. I don't really, really remember any poor decisions um, in terms of that. We had some long drives. You know, that were uh, long eight, nine, ten, eleven play drives, which is sometimes unusual. And uh, big deal is going to be scoring touchdowns in the red area. Okay, let's go, Connor Riley, and then we'll go to uh, McGregor with red and black. 
Hey, Kirby, I wanted to ask you about Tate Ratledge. How has he improved this spring, and where exactly is he playing on the offensive line for you guys? Because I know he can move around quite a bit. Yeah, he's playing guard. He's growing up. Uh, he needed lots of reps. He's getting lots of reps. Uh, he's continuing to work in there. We think he's a powerful, uh, intelligent, um, still inexperienced. And experience is the greatest attribute you can get when it comes to SEC. You just you can't simulate what you get in there um, in terms of third down, the speed of the game. And, um, you know, he's a guy that needs a 1,000 reps, and we're trying to get him to a 1,000 as fast as we can. So he's embraced it, and he's worked really hard. Uh, hi, Kirby. Uh, I know you've mentioned the development of the offense so far this spring. Uh, I was just wondering, what is one specific area you really want to see the offense excel at on G-Day next Saturday, especially considering the injuries within the wide receiver core? Well, I think decision-making, you know, uh, throw and catch the ball, make the plays that the defense gives you, uh, be explosive. We want to be explosive. We want to be a vertical passing team. Um, we're not into making excuses about what receivers are in and what receivers aren't. I think we got good receivers in, and uh, I think they compete really well. And that'll be the expectation every day we go on that field is to be able to attack people vertically and throw the ball and catch the ball. All right, let's go to Henry Queen, and then we'll uh, come back to Sarah. Hi, Kirby. I know you already touched on uh, the competition at left, uh, left tackle, but do you expect um, the flexibility of the offensive line to pay dividends in the season, and how have their performance been as a whole uh, throughout the spring? Hard to measure as a whole in the spring. I don't, you know, I would reserve judgment on today till I see it. We had some some pressure inside, and don't know if they were guys getting beat or guys making mistakes. I don't know which one it was. We had a couple times that you know it's a tough call whether it was a sack because we're obviously not live, so you're trying to judge that in in game speed. Um, the depth I hope is there. We've had traditionally really good depth in the offensive lines. I can't say that it's any any better or worse. You know, we, we, we got who we got. Then we got one more young man coming in in terms of offensive line in the fall. But the beauty is that we got guys out there that are getting better and competing each day. And um, we'll see where we are. We certainly uh, have not arrived or, or, or where we need to be. Hey, Kirby. Um, given the fact that you guys have 16 early enrollees, the most that you've had at Georgia thus far, I was wondering if you could kind of attribute that to maybe a trend that's going on um, within – college schools or maybe even COVID and then what you think is the biggest um, advantage they get from college? Uh, biggest advantage would be acclimation to college, to college life, to going to class, to the speed of the game, um, to, to be, being a college student. There's no greater change in your life than when you leave high school and go to college. And to do that in the middle of your senior year is much tougher than maybe, you know, just dipping your toe in the water in the summer and kind of easing in the shallow end coming into the fall where they go just complete dive the deep end when they come in here in January. So uh, the trend is there. It's there because COVID was a major factor this year because nobody seemed to want to stay in second semester of their school and wanted to get to where they were going so they could start their college career. A lot of kids are saying this, I got a better chance of graduating with one additional semester. So whether you think you're a three-year guy or a four-year guy, three and a half and four and a half is much bigger than three and four. So they gain one more semester, 15 hours towards graduation. And that tends to be the trend. And I don't think that trend will change. All right. We got uh, going to take two more questions. If anybody wants to jump back in with a follow-up, go ahead. Kirby, uh, I wanted to ask you about uh, Ryan Davis. Uh, he's a guy that was injured, came in injured, seemed like he stayed injured his entire freshman year. What's he looking like now that he's healthy and, and is he kind of growing to your liking there at an inside linebacker position? Uh, been very pleased with Ryan's growth. I tell you, his, his, his attitude, demeanor, understanding of the defense, toughness um, has improved. He is, you know, last year I would have said, man, he might be a liability to put in the game. Now – I'm not sure that he's not uh, very comfortable going in the game. You like to be able to play more than two inside backers. You'd love to have four guys that can go in the game and really function and play. And we've rarely had that. We've been very fortunate to have three, not always four. And we're getting to that point. So um, he's he's a pleasure. He's, he's, he's been so much more coachable. I think he's going to be an impact player on special teams. Uh, I thought he made a couple of plays out there to, to, today that were really you know, special plays. We've moved him around. So it's tough on him. Um, we've done some different things in third down with him, trying to develop 
uh, some things third down he can do similar to what Adam does uh, because Adam brings so much value, but we, we need more people like that with um, some of the guys we lost last year. Kirby, what has Dan Jackson showed you in the secondary? Dan's intelligent. Dan's smart. You know, I, I, don't, I don't know how many people know Dan. He's a, a young man that's a walk-on in our program, but, uh, you know, he, he, he got to school at Georgia on his own. He's a great student. Just to do that is uh, pretty incredible. And um, he's smart. He, uh, he tested well. He runs fast. You know, a lot of people assume that if you're a walk-on, you can't run. He, he, he's fast. He's smart. And he's getting better with every rep. And uh, it's so important to him. You know, like it, it matters to Dan. And uh, I don't know how he played today, but I know uh, he's gotten better with every practice. Thanks, Coach Smart. Thanks, everybody. Yes. Have a great day.